All right, guys, in today's video, we've got one of my favorite topics. I've been waiting to do this one for a while. We're talking about how the wrists work through impact to release the club correctly. This is probably the thing I get the most questions about. I'm gonna go through those today. I've got some props um, to help that we'll go through. And there's two main concepts that I wanna talk about with the release. We're gonna focus on the back and forth motion of the wrist. Okay, the back and forth, so the extension and flexion of the wrist. And we're gonna talk about the rotation. Okay, supination, pronation. So there's a bunch of micro movements involved in the release pattern what should you do, why, how to get there. But I wanna to focus today on those two pieces and starting with the back and forth wrist angle, okay? Now, when we look at good golf swings, if we highlight someone, let's say once we get down to about club shaft last parallel to the ground, and I've got the hanger on here, I'll kinda of talk about how this works as we go. But as we work down into club last parallel, you would see a good golfer would have their lead wrist relatively flat depends a little bit on the grip you have, but let's just say relatively flat. By the time they would get to impact, their wrist, lead wrist, would still be relatively flat. Now from impact to the time the shaft gets about 45 degrees to the ground is when that lead wrist first starts working actually into extension, and that continues on until we'll look at about the time the shaft's parallel to the ground. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a drill here to do this in a minute. But just in terms of knowledge, flat here, still flat here, and then that's actually gonna to work towards extension or cupping through impact into about here. Now, all golfers through impact are working towards this extension. You notice with the hanger, if I've got the wrist flat, it's on my forearm which is a flat left wrist. It stays on my form at impact if it's flat. Notice now from here through, that's gonna to start to slowly come off. Now, that's what's supposed to happen. Good ball strikers do it in that amount, in that order, and in that sequence. So it happens out here. The poor of the ball striker, when you start to see what people call flip motion, they do the same extending of that lead wrist. They just do it too much and too early. Okay, they do it too much and too early. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that as we go. But that's what we're looking for, flat, flat, slight extension. There's also arm rotation. Every golfer needs arm rotation. Even the golfer who's got the most square club face ever in the world, right? Like a Victor Hovland, still has to rotate the club face some. So from here, if we look at a normal golfer, the toes slightly in front of the heel, the wrist is flat. You'll notice about always, and we'll show some examples, the glove logo points straight away from them. So the shaft is parallel to the ground, the glove logo points straight away. By impact, the glove logo, depending upon the grip, is gonna point relatively at the target or just slightly right of it. If you get a really strong grip, it'll be a little right of it. And through impact, it needs to point directly to the left behind. So from this point in the swing, think about this, shaft last parallel to shaft first parallel, that glove logo rotates 180 degrees, okay? We get caught up in this, like, let me get the face really square really early, which I'm cool with a lot of that, but there still needs to be some active rotation. I see way more golfers who struggle with contact, inconsistency, weak right shots, because they don't close the face enough via arm rotation, okay? And we can add some of this, just normal amounts. Adam Scott's your favorite players away at the target to the left. Okay, we're gonna talk through that. Now to feel this, okay, I've got the hanger on, which helps me with the wrist angle. But if I'm looking at the arm rotation amount, I like to train this in with a lead arm only drill, okay? So what I want you to start to do, and I've got a seven iron, you can do this with a shorter iron as well, is take your setup position, let's get into a downswing where the wrist is pretty flat, the toes right on top of the heel, and let's make some swings where you get used to, let me get the glove logo, at the target by impact with a flat left wrist, okay? You'll notice there's some down hinging of the wrist. And let me get it into here where, if I'm working towards the camera like the Rory, you'll notice there's some extension. This comes off here, and the toe is either gonna be dead on top of the heel or slightly turned to the plane. Okay, slightly turned to the plane. So as I'm working through with these lead arm only swings, I'm not gonna be shy about letting this come off past impact 
past the golf ball. I'm also not going to be shy about getting the glove logo turned all the way to the left. And what I like to do is have golfers re-hinge it, like you'll see in like the Tiger and the Rory, where if we drew a line down the shaft, I'll show you this way, the club should re-hinge up the plane line. So if I just hold this on the side to show you, and this is my ball target line, when I come through, the wrist is flat, flat. It's working towards extension. Now, as I work through in the follow through, this club should rehinge where the butt of the club points right at the ball target line. Okay, that's what it should look like. I'm okay with a little bit of, you'll see the arms a little bit bent at that point in time, and it's rehinged up the plane line. So what I like to have golfers do to feel this, if you're looking to find just a normal looking release pattern, is how do I keep my wrist pretty flat, which we'll talk about, rotate the glove from away from me to, to the left of me, and get the club hinging to the point where it points right back down the ball line. Now, what do you notice as I'm doing this? You should notice a couple of things. Number one, I am having some body rotation along with it. I'm not doing this. This is what I see a lot of golfers do. Arms stay straight the whole way, face points up towards the sky. And I'm okay with the arm staying straight, especially as a drill, but there's gotta be some arm rotation with it and there's gotta be some body rotation. So I'm gonna let that fold up. I'm gonna let the butt of the club at the ball target line. And you'll notice as I do that, the club face is gonna have be uh, kind of tilted down to the plane like the Rory. And that's okay, so long as I have normal body rotation with it. Okay, what I don't wanna have, what I don't wanna have when I come through is I don't wanna be trying to hold it off so much that, okay, I'm down here in a good spot, maybe I'm in a pretty good spot here, that I come through and it points way, 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 way up towards the sky. Especially if I come through and it looks something like this. What I wanna have happen is a normal amount of club face rotation, which is here, logo away, at impact, where it's right down the target line, and then it's just gonna gently work up the plane line here to the left. So I like that as a sort of indicator and a general feel, some lead arm only. Now the best way, in my opinion, to practice this is with feedback. I like the hanger. You can, we'll put this in a link down below. You can try a plastic hanger at home. It's more inconvenient to hold. I like this one better. So what I like to do is set it up just to the right of center and make some swings where I've got it on my lead wrist is flat, keep it on by impact, slowly start to let it off into my follow through and then let that club rehinge up the plane line. So I go like this. This to me would be like the best way to train your release pattern. And again, those two micro pieces of the wrist back, you know, forward and back and the arm rotation. So I'll show you what this looks like if you had it on. We always just start short and build up from here. Wrist is flat, glove logo's away. Wrist is flat, glove logo at the target. Wrist is extended, glove logo straight behind me. That'd be like a very neutral release pattern. And again, some of these pieces are gonna depend upon your grip type, okay? The weaker your grip is, the more you gotta add some pieces to close it, like the wrist bow. The stronger it is, you probably don't need as much forearm rotation, but flat with logo away, flat logo at the target, let it come off with the logo dead behind you. Then we'll go through some fixes. But that would be like a very neutral, normal release pattern. I could even have a little bit more of the arm rotation to get the club hinging up the plane line. Like that was better. Okay. Now, in terms of faults and fixes, what I see most often, right, in terms of the wrist angle part, like I said, the better golfers have the wrist flat, flat, and then it's extended later out here. If you struggle with ball striking, odds are you do that extension too soon. Now, if you watch the channel, you know that, how do you fix a problem, right? You fix a problem by doing the opposite and exaggerating. So if you're someone who's looking to go flat, flat, but you look like this, release early, release early, you have to actually feel like, feel like that wrist is staying bowed longer, right? Bowed longer into impact and maybe even past impact for a little just to get to the normal amount, right? So if I had this hanger on, what I would be feeling just right of center at setup is I'd feel like that's pressed into my wrist and I'm really feeling from here 
like I'm trying to keep the top of my wrist ahead of the knuckles, or even have the glove load go down a little bit, like I'm really exaggerating the wrist bowing, understanding that my normal's like this, so I'm feeling that just to get to my normal amounts. So if I had the hanger on, and I wanted to really exaggerate that piece to get the flat left wrist, exaggerating the bowing, that would look something like that. And there when I exaggerate, I would expect a ball that starts, you know, roughly on the target line and draws a little bit to the left. If I didn't have the hanger and I wanted to really get that flat left wrist part, I could focus on a couple little micro feels. As I'm working down, again, I feel like the top of the wrist is almost staying ahead of the knuckles. So I'm feeling more this way. This part of my wrist is ahead of the knuckles. When I go into extension, notice the knuckles get ahead of my wrist. And again, I want some of that, but I want that later out here. So if you go too much too early, you gotta feel like this stays in front of those knuckles. Those knuckles stay back for longer, probably even through impact. And when I do that, obviously what that does to the club face is lowers the loft and closes the face. So as I come down, I'm really exaggerating. Look how low that club face is, and it's more to the left. Now that's way too exaggerated. But if you're coming from an early flip, what does your ball flight look like, right? Inconsistent contact, probably high and short. This would be lower and longer. So really feeling that, that wrist angle, right, exaggerated. How much do I feel it? I want you to feel it to the point where it's actually flat, flat, and here, but it might feel like I'm really keeping that top of the wrist ahead of the bottom, especially if I needed to be able to compress the ball more. And like that, like I did that, really felt like I was doing it quite a bit there, and that ball was just a tiny draw pretty much at the target line. The more you feel that, again, we just want it pretty flat, flat, but to fix this, the more you feel like you're curling that wrist under, top of wrist in front of knuckles, the ball should launch lower, more solid, less fades, right, more draws. And I'm just starting with kind of half swing eight irons and you build up to full. So really exaggerating the wrist piece. And there's another one. So when I actually do it enough, it kind of starts right on target line and draws about 15 feet left. That would be a miss that we would all want. I'm trying to get rid of the weak right. Arm rotation comes the same way. We did some videos with John Dunnigan. He said, hey, the best players have about twice as much lead arm rotation than the worst players. He said the worst players also do it twice as fast down by the ball. Okay, so a good ball striker is rotating that lead arm and club face quite a bit, and they're doing it slowly throughout the whole swing. The worst ball striker doesn't do it at all and tries to really do it late at the bottom, right? So you miss kind of weak right sometimes, overdo it, and then you'll miss some to the left, right? You might, might get that action. We want to have this glove logo point away, glove logo point behind me. I don't even mind, especially if you're weak right, have it point away, and then point it kind of down and left a little bit, right? Get that butt of the club hinging back up the plane line. So I'm gonna feel the left wrist flat, and I'm gonna overdo the arm rotation a little bit. This should kind of pull draw slightly. Glove logo kind of down and left. Yeah, I mean slightly, and that's probably 15 feet left of target. But notice the misses I'm getting here. Strong and a little left. I'm coming from neutral. If you're coming from weak right, you need to feel these things. You would love strong and left, right? Just to get to a neutral amount. So what do we actually want one more time? We want logo away, logo roughly at the target or slightly right, and then straight to the left. If you're coming from weak right, don't be shy about overdoing that, okay? Don't be shy about overdoing that. We want the left wrist to be pretty flat, pretty flat, and it's always gonna work towards extension but the best players are still pretty flat at impact and working towards later. From a practice perspective, how we can work on that is with something like the hanger. Okay, we can keep this on, have it slightly to the right, learn how to have it on, keep it on, and let it throw off there a little bit past impact. Yeah, like that. Now the last piece is the club rehinging up the plane line. Right, so like those are really the like, the forward and back wrist motion, the arm rotation, and like the plane line. This is what we should all be doing, and you're just seeing what side of the spectrum you're on and what you need to feel more of. But as I'm coming through, that club should absolutely 
butt of the club replaying on the line. Okay, that's what I'm actually looking for. Would love for you to flick your bow in the wrist a little, add in some arm rotation, let the club point back on the ball target line, have a little bit of natural body motion along with it. And worst case scenario, if you overdo these things and you hit slight pull draws, that puts you in the top 10%. That puts you like just like that. That puts you in the top 10% of golfers in the world. Okay, so if you're in the 80 to 90% that has that weak right miss, don't be shy about those. Do I want you to get the club face more square earlier, right, to make things easier? Absolutely. But I've been saying that for 15 years, and I still see the same issues all the time. So no matter what, when you go play, don't be shy about those two things. That's how the wrists really work through the ball. I know that's micro and detail, but that's what a lot of you have been asking about. Any questions, leave a comment down below. Appreciate you guys watching as always.